All right, in this lesson, we are gonna go through some more practice problems what are examples of doing revenue and expense journal entries. Specifically here, we're gonna be looking at the expense entries and how we deal with them. So just like the last lesson, we're gonna walk you through some of the expense transactions and what those journal entries look like after we get done analyzing them. So let's get started here, going straight into example number five. With example number five, Walnut Creek issued checks to their employees who picked the 5,000 pounds of oranges from the farm. So these are the employees that did the expense of picking those oranges that we sold to the store. So in this case, uh, we gave up $1,600 of cash and it said that the total amount of wages were $1,600. Nothing indicated here that we didn't pay them yet. Um, it says that we issued checks, so we paid them, so we actually paid them in cash, um, well, checks. And then uh, what's the other side? What's the exchange? Well, we got their services, right? So employees provide their services typically in the form of time, right? They give up their time in exchange for cash. And so in this case, uh, we don't have an asset liability or equity that we're giving up, but we are giving up an expense, right? So uh, we're incurring an expense is a better term. We're incurring $1,600 worth of expenses of their time. So the two accounts that we're gonna use, the first one's the easy one's cash, right? So we're giving up $1,600 in cash. And then the second one here is a new account for us. Uh, this is what we would call, what type of expense are we incurring? We're incurring salaries and wages expense. So salaries and wages expense. Okay, now what component is cash is? So hopefully by now you know that cash is an asset. Okay, so we're going to put an asset here. Uh, what type of account is salaries and wages expense? So special hint here, typically if it has the word expense at the end, it's an expense. Now there are exceptions to that. Deferred expense is not an expense. That is a liability, so we're deferring the expense. Um, or sorry, def accrued expenses. So accrued expenses um, are liabilities. I don't know if anybody actually uses deferred expenses. Um, we're deferring the expense. So deferred expense may be prepaid expenses, but anyways, um, just know that most expenses are expenses except for maybe a few. So accrued expenses, uh, prepaid expenses are examples. Those are assets and liabilities. So anyways, uh, so in this case, this is an expense. All right, so what's happening to cash? So cash, we're, rec we're receiving or giving up? We are giving up. So if we're giving up cash, uh, then our account is going to go down. So decreases in cash uh, account there, okay? Now, what about our salaries and wages expense? So again, salaries and wages expense, we think of as a scoreboard, the more expenses we incur, we increase the expense. So in this case, we're gonna go up. So we're gonna increase our expense account, okay? All right, so now we can use our uh, expanded equation key here, and we know that cash is an asset, that asset is decreasing, so cash is an asset, asset is decreasing, we're gonna credit cash, okay? Now, salaries and wages expenses and expense, that's also on the left-hand side of the expanded equation, so expanded equation, left-hand side, that is increasing, therefore we're going to debit, all right, so now we have our debits and our credits. What goes first? What goes first is our debits. So we are going to put debit salaries and wages expense, and we're gonna debit it $1,600 because that's how much we paid these employees. And then we're gonna credit $1,600 um, in cash, okay? So we have a debit, we have a credit, our debits equal our credits. So it looks like we did a pretty good job with our example here. All right, moving on to number six here. Walnut Creek has an insurance policy as a barrier against potential lawsuits from customers using their venue. Smart thing to do. April 1st, Walnut Creek pays three months of insurance. The total bill is $1,500 and covers April through June. All right. So what's happening here? Well, I, I know where people could look at this and go, okay, insurance expense, right? Uh, but time has to pass, right? So 
Um, what you might not know is if you got in a car wreck, um, and you have a six month policy and that first month you get in a car wreck, uh, the insurance company doesn't keep your insurance policy money that you paid on that first month. What they do is they prorate how much insurance you used, which might be a couple of days, and then refund you the premiums that you paid when you first bought that insurance. Why? Because you prepaid six months of car insurance, but you didn't even use six months, you only used maybe a week before you totaled the car, right? So they have to refund you the other 24, 25 weeks that you haven't actually used the insurance. So a lot of times you'll get two checks. One check is for uh, the liquidating damages to your vehicle. And then the second check you'll get is a refund of the insurance premiums that you didn't use over time. So in this case here, we haven't used any of the insurance because we're only on day one of April. So when we pay cash, in this case of $1,500, uh, we are going to, uh, we are going to, prepay we're going to keep that asset in our balance sheet until time has passed and then we'll expense it so we expense it as we use the insurance and when when i say as we use the insurance using the insurance means time has gone by not that we actually file the claim so as we use the insurance as time goes by then we'll expense it so after one month we'll expense 500 bucks after two months, we'll expense the second 500 bucks. And on the third month, we'll expense the last 500 bucks. And we have a section on that later on, but I wanna kinda of give you a preview of kinda of what do we do with that. We do have an example that's related to this that we'll go through here in a few minutes. All right, so with that being said, the two accounts that, so I gave up cash of $1,500. And then what did I get in return? I actually got a prepaid insurance. So prepaid insurance. And you could put insurance or insurance expense, either one would work. I'm just gonna use prepaid insurance for now uh, because of space. Uh, but normally I would put maybe prepaid insurance expense. All right, what type of account is cash? Cash is an asset. What type of account is prepaid insurance? Prepaid insurance is not an expense, it is an asset, right? Why is it an asset? Because you can get that refunded if the policy, uh, you don't use all the policies or you change insurance agencies, you should get your money back on the day uh, based on how many days you haven't used. All right, so cash is an asset, is it increasing or decreasing? Well, I'm paying $1,500, so cash is decreasing out of my pocket because I'm paying $1,500. What about prepaid insurance? Well, I have more of it, so we're gonna increase prepaid insurance because I have it as I start to use it that will go down. Uh, so cash is an asset, it's decreasing, therefore we're going to credit cash. What about prepaid insurance? Well, prepaid insurance is an asset. The asset is increasing in nature. Therefore, we're going to debit the account, okay? All right, so what comes first? Debits, so debit goes first. We're gonna debit prepaid insurance for $1,500 and we're gonna credit cash because we're gonna pay cash of $1,500. Dollars. Debits equals our credits, debits first, looks good. All right, moving on to number seven with number seven, Walnut Creek wants to get the word out about the venue. They do so, to do so, they put up Facebook ads for April, which totaled $500. Facebook bills the venue on April 30th and payment is expected in May. So what has happened? Well, we uh, were provided, we were given Facebook ads. So that's an expense, right? That's an expense that we incurred. And then what did we give up? Well, we didn't give up cash. We basically gave up an IOU to pay in the future, right? So in this case, what accounts are affected? Well, I incurred expenses. We call that advertising expenses. And what did I give up? Well, I gave up a promise to pay, a future promise to pay. We call that accounts payable. I abbreviate accounts because I couldn't fit it all. Uh, so what component is the advertising expense? Well, it has expense in its name, so most likely it is a an expense. So expense. What about accounts payable? Accounts pay, 
a bowl has the word pay in it. I don't like to pay, which means it's a liability. All right, so is advertising expense increasing or decreasing? Well, we've seen more of it, so we're incurring more expenses. So we are increasing advertising expense. What about accounts payable, the liability? Well, do I owe more? I obviously do owe more, so that's gonna increase. So advertising expense is an expense that's on the left-hand side of the accounting equation. It is increasing, therefore we're going to debit the advertising expense. What about the payables? Well, the payables is a liability. That liability is increasing as well, so we are going to credit that account. So what goes first? Debit. So we're gonna debit advertising expense for $500, and we're gonna credit account payable for $500. Dollars. So that is a traditional expense journal entry. The only difference here is that we don't have cash being paid. So uh, we'll pay that here uh, at some point in the future. And we do have some other lessons where we'll go through all of this uh, uh, on the other side of this, but that's basically what we have here. All right, example number eight, Walnut Creek has their internet service payment directly debited from their bank account. On April 30th, the service provider debited $125 from their account for services related to April. So key thing here, this is services related to April and they paid in April, which means this is kind of just basically they exchange cash for an expense at the same time. All right, so what accounts are affected here? Well, I gave up cash for $125 and what did I get? Utilities. So. Uh, we are going to use an account called um, internet service expense, right? So internet service expense. Why? Because it's an expense to us. All right, what component is cash? Cash is an asset. What is the in, uh, internet service expense? Internet service expense is an expense. All right, cash is an asset. Is it increasing or decreasing? Well, we're having to pay $125, so our cash account is going to decrease. What about our expenses? Well, scoreboard, it's going up, so we are going to increase. All right, so now we can use, again, our expanded equation. Cash is an asset. That asset is decreasing, therefore we're going to credit that account. Internet expense is an expense that is increasing, therefore we're going to debit that account. Debits go before credits. Internet service expense for 125 and then credit cash for 125, okay? So here, uh, it's all being done electronically, which is probably how it's done nowadays more often than not. And so as we see those booked into our uh, bank account, this is kind of the entry that we need to make in our accounts, okay? So in this lesson here, we looked at all of the expense options, really. Uh, expense happening the same time cash is given. We looked at uh, situations in which we prepaid an expense. The expense hasn't happened yet, but we prepaid it, and then we'll expense it later on. And then lastly, we looked at an example where uh, we incurred the expense, but we haven't paid for it with our advertising expense. Had to check that one out one more time. All right, so here is a, a summary of all the transactions that we've done in the last two lessons. If this is your first lesson and you didn't even watch the last lessons, well, we did four transactions in the last lesson, so that's what this shows here. So transactions one through four were in the last lesson, transactions five through six, five through eight are in this lesson. And you can see um, we have our debits, we have our credits, and we have our debit and credit amount. So uh, if you need to check that against uh, the work that you did, this is kind of the answers, okay?
So with that being said, hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of revenue and expense transactions. All of the transactions we did in the last two lessons are transactions that you're expected to know going forward. Um, but the key thing is if you understand the fundamentals of how we do a journal entry and thinking about what accounts are affected, what components are affected, are they increasing and decreasing? And then using that information with the key of the expanded equation, you'll do you'll be able to do any journal entry that you are given. So um, we're gonna work less on the emphasis on journal entries, like how we solve them. And from now on, we're actually gonna actually solve them um, uh, without the, the some of the guides. So just know that as we go forward into other sections, you might be going, well, where's the eight boxes or nine boxes or the boxes that we would put the accounts, the components, the increasing and decreasing, uh, and then the debits and credits. Those are probably going to be gone because we want to focus more on the content of what we're trying to do versus the mechanics, right? I just taught you the mechanics over two sections, uh, so we don't need to rehash that. But that doesn't mean that you personally can't off to the side do that on your own on a scratch piece of paper. You definitely can do that. I do that sometimes when I just not sure how a journal entry needs to be formed, I'll kind of do the same thing. What accounts, what components, increasing and decreasing. Okay, how does that affect the accounting equation? There's my debits and credits, then I can book the entry. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we will see you in the next video. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw share it with someone and if you want to help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on youtube make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell that way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So, hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.